We should always let nature inspire us, simply because nature has found solutions through trial and error over periods of many hundreds of millions of years. We reckon there's only about 2.9% of the land surface of this planet which is still functionally intact in terms of ecosystems. That means 97% and more of the land surface of this planet has already been damaged by humans. And ecosystem-based management consists of doing one job extremely well to observe that landscape and understand what's naturally happening in that landscape. What kind of trees, plants and shrubs regenerate? What kind of animals make their homes there? Once you begin to have a systems approach to the planet, to understand that it's composed of many interlocking parts, then suddenly there's a whole bunch of things that fall into place. For our indigenous people, conservation is being part of a larger community. Western society separated themselves from it. So it's our responsibility to teach people who don't know that knowledge what it's all about. This place is very special. And this was a traditional land where our people used to come and hunt the buffalo because this was buffalo territory. Our culture, to a large extent, is based on and related to that buffalo. And so when there was no buffalo to be seen, our elders dream was we need to bring those buffalo back. From a Western point of view, it seems that we're always looking at those animals, those buffalo, that we human beings are going to go and save. When in reality, if we let them be, that eco-balance that they bring about will save us then you'll have true conservation. We always hear that there's too much livestock in the world and it's responsible for a lot of land degradation. That's not quite accurate. What's responsible for the land degradation is the mismanagement of livestock. In February of 2017, the buffalo were brought back to Banff National Park. And our people, our indigenous people, they worked with the National Park and their approach was a slow release program. We'll put the buffalo in small pens, get them to know the area, and then we'll enlarge in the pastures until we take all the fences down. And now the buffalo have had their first born over here in their territory. And because of that, they now claim this as their home. The buffalo is the best environmentalist you can have because it is an eco-engineer. Wherever the buffalo roams, plants reappear, birds, even insects and so forth which all contribute to our overall existence in the long run. It's helping us bring the land back to where it should be. And if we cooperate with them, hey, the land will come back much faster than if we try to do it as humans alone. So suddenly, your animals have become a part of the solution and have regenerated the soil. Why is that so important? All that explosion of life that you see above the ground also means an explosion of life below the ground. It means roots of all of these plants going deep into the soil, and these roots are made of carbon. So you're putting carbon into the soil doing it this way. It's also a keystone species when it comes to culture. Our songs, our stories, our ceremonies, are all related to that 
buffalo. Having the buffalo in that circle, sitting next to us, so to speak, is like having grandpa, grandma next to you for security. And that buffalo also brings about a balance in the relational networks amongst humans. It does me great good and happiness. Actually, it brings health back to our people to have those buffalo roaming freely over in their traditional territory.